I don't mind carrying the extra weight. I think of it as my daily exercise. Best Med Medical Scheme. Better living, better life. Thank you. Madiba said there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way it treats its children. And as a new parent, you want to be the perfect caregiver. But there's no doubt a number of burning, tricky questions that will crop up as you journey through raising your child. And then because every child is unique, even seasoned parents don't have all the answers, which is why I've asked someone who does to step up to the plate and answer them. Dr. Paul Sinclair, great to have you in the studio, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be here. We've talked about this often on the show, vaccinations. Do you vacillate or do you vaccinate? Uh, I think you know what I feel, I know what you feel, but just go through it again. Are vaccinations a set? Well, I think we have to accept that the greatest thing we've done for children is vaccinate them. And it's the one thing as parents we can decide to do, and we have the option, and we can protect our children from both lethal and potentially damaging diseases. Brilliant. So, do it. And the controversy between MMR and autism, let's Look, just nail that again. I think it's been put to bed, and uh, we know that it was fallacious, it, there were lies, and that there is no connection between any form of neurodevelopmental deterioration and vaccination of any type, be it the MMR or any other vaccines. Brilliant. Love the word fallacious, by the way. I must look that up. Throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, thank you. I've asked them, our audience, that they've got some burning questions that they're going to throw at you. Uh, Jade, you had a question. Yes. I just wanted to find out what's the best thing to apply to baby skin? Jed, I think the less we put on it, probably the better. Um, I think there are far too many perfumed and, and other products out there. I think keeping a baby's skin well moisturized is important, and there are lots of good products that are deemed to be hyperallergenic. But I think stay away from the smellies. Melanie, you were going to ask about a nappy rash, I think. Yes. How do I deal with persistent nappy rash? Thanks, Melanie. I, I think one needs to try and establish what the cause of the nappy rash is. And if we can keep it simple, there are three things that cause nappy rashes. A contact issue, which can be from urine or the nappy, eczema, which is an allergic type reaction, or thrush, commonly, and that's obviously a fungal infection. And once you've identified the cause, treat it. How would you identify that cause as a mom? Would this be something you'd have to take to your doctor or could you sort of try a, a zinc cream, for example, that just works on everything? I think barrier creams or um, other you know, nappy rash creams are useful, but if something's persistent, it's not getting better, check with your pharmacist or let your doctor have a look. You had a question too, Michelle. Yes. What is the best way to treat a fever? Fevers are always very concerning for, for parents, um, and I think we need to accept, and, and as parents we, we get quite nervous about it, fevers are normal. In fact, fever is a way of a body fighting an infection. It's not a big flag to please give me something, and I think the important thing is to treat your child. If they're running around with a temperature of 38 and they're happy, leave them alone. If they're looking pup and weak and useless, then treat yeah. them, and I try and identify the, the cause of, cause of, of the, the fever, and that's the way to treat a fever. Yeah, well, I agree with you. In fact, don't eliminate the fever, just reduce the fever, that's the idea. You don't Absolutely. want to take it away. Uh, one final question, Yolandi. There's so many aids out there. What is the best one to use uh, with regards to teething? Well, I suppose the question is, do you use an aid, an aid for teething, or do you just let it happen? Look, I think teething can be very uncomfortable. I mean, having a tooth pushed through your gum is not a pleasant experience. And, and as males, we don't handle pain very well. So the little boys tend to cry a lot with teething. I think something to chew on is always important. I think when there's a lot of products, it suggests that nothing really works. And I think if children are really uncomfortable with, with teething, then use an anti-inflammatory, some paracetamol, some ibuprofen, or some methanamic acid. Use one of the simple pain relievers to take it away. Okay. How would you advise parents, new parents particularly, to approach an issue with their child? I mean, do they panic? Do they go to Google? Do they phone their pharmacist? You know, do they just sit and wait it out? What's a good, healthy approach to something that's not right with my kid? Look, I think you need to talk to a professional, and whoever that person is, um, could be your local GP, could be uh, your midwife, uh, or your pediatrician. And I think we are probably too available at times, but you know, when you're concerned about your child, you know, one thing you learn as a doctor, you know Michael, and as a pediatrician in particular, mothers are never wrong. And if they think something's not up, you know, right with little Johnny or Betty Sue, they're right. Yeah. So check in with a professional. Brilliant. Paul, great advice. Something I'm sure all the mums in our audience will agree with is that having a baby opens the door to a lot of unsolicited advice. While it is useful to listen to your mother-in-law's pearls of wisdom, be aware that there are so many myths out there. So if you're in doubt, as Paul says, always check it out with your doctor. There are certain things I love to do that are also good for my health. Like shopping. 
Best Med Medical Scheme. Better living, better life. I want to live the best life.